Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, welcome to Christ the King Church. I'm Melinda, Pastor Morris' starter. I want to welcome you to the service today, but I want to take a moment and tell you about some of our services here at Christ the King through the week. From On Sunday morning, from 10 to 10.30, we have Sunday school. At 10.45, we have communion, which is open to all baptized believers. At 11 o'clock, we start our worship service. At the end of our worship service, we have a time of ministry where our elders will anoint you with oil and pray over you for healing or whatever your need may be. On Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, we have our regular midweek service. On Thursday, this is our little special meeting that I want to take a moment and explain to you about. It's called our Healing Room Evening. It's from 6.30 to 8, and it's a time of teaching and ministry time. The teaching is from 6.30 to 7.30 because we believe that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. At 7.30 to 8, it's the ministry portion of it in which we have a group of people that will pray over you for whatever your need may be be it physically, financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever you desire prayer for, they will come in agreement with you about. Also, if you do not have a specific need that you want prayer over, feel free to come and join us anyway from 6.30 to 7.30 during the teaching time. At this time, again, I would like to welcome you, and we will join the ministry now. I want to welcome you to Christ the King Church. I'm Pastor Sam Parsons. I'm one of the associates here. This is our School of the Bible. We'll be studying today about how Jesus is our high priest forever. Before we do that, let's take a moment, let's pray, and then we'll get into the Word. Father, we thank you for your Word, and Father, we thank you for another opportunity to study. And Lord, I pray that you would help me to convey those things, Lord, that you've shown to me. Father, I pray that your word will come alive to those who hear it. And as they view this program, Lord, I pray that you would speak to their hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start with Hebrews chapter 6 and beginning with verse 20. This is an interesting statement about Jesus. It says in Hebrews 6.20, it says, Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus who's made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is, in many ways, obviously, is so much better than what they had during the time of the Old Testament. It says here that he was a priest, made a high priest, forever after the order of Melchizedek. The high priest in the Old Testament was only able to serve for a certain amount of time. It, it went normally by lineage, who would be the next high priest. But we're told here that he was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now that's an interesting guy, Melchizedek, and we're going to get a little bit more into information about him. But the big thing to remember is we have a high priest who's different from any high priest at all in the Old Testament. Here's the biggest difference. The high priest in the Old Testament went in to make blood sacrifices for himself and the people of God, and he had to do that once a year. The high priest had to make sure first that everything was good with him, because if he didn't, he wouldn't make it out of the Holy of Holies where he was offering the sacrifice alive. So he would have to make yearly, an atonement for himself as well as for the people. And as I said, that was repetitive because it really didn't take away sins. It only covered them for a period of time, and therefore it had to be redone every year. But we see here when Jesus died for us, the Word tells us he took his blood and applied it to the mercy seat in heaven one time for all. So it doesn't have to be repeated. But the high, he, our high priest, and what he does is he sits at the right hand of the Father, constantly making intercession for us. Now let's look a little bit more. This, it's interesting, after the order of Melchizedek. So let's go back and look in Genesis 14, which is the time when Melchizedek actually shows up in the Scriptures. Kind of a, a mysterious guy. 
So let's go to Genesis, and we will look at chapter 14, and we're going to be looking at verses 18 through 20. So Genesis 14, and we're going to look at 18, 18 through 20. Now what had happened was, there were some armies that came around, they kidnapped some of Abram's kinfolks, and he went out, he captured them, he got, he got his, everybody back, and then all of a sudden, in verse 18, this Melchizedek shows up, and it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, talking about Abram. He blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hands. And this last statement here is from Abraham gave tithes of all. Now, isn't it interesting? Today, there's so many shadows of Christ in, in many of these passages here, but one of the most interesting ones to me is the very first thing it says. It says, Melchizedek, who was king of Salem, which means peace, says he brought forth bread and wine. Does that not sound to you like when we do our Holy Communion, there's bread and wine that's used to remind us of the sacrifice of Jesus. For he said, this is my body and this is my blood, speaking about the bread and the wine. So Melchizedek brought bread and wine. And this is interesting to me because you have to realize this is before there even was an Israel. This is, Abram was the, the father of, of all of that. And so he was, while Abram was here, none of that was in place. And yet, it says... He was the priest of the Most High God. So he was a priest of the God that we serve today in an era where there were all kinds of gods everywhere. Nearly every different group of people had the gods that they worshipped. But yet it says here he was a, a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed Abram. And he said this, this is interesting, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. So he was blessing Abram on behalf of God. And he said, And blessed be the Most High God, who's delivered your enemies into your hand. And it says here that Abram gave tithes of all, he gave these to Melchizedek. Now, there's not really much else. If you look it up, there's really no other references in the Old Testament about Melchizedek. But all of a sudden, it starts showing up. Turn with me back to Hebrews. And we're going to look at a few verses here in verse 7. We're going to look beginning with verse 1 and kind of walk through here a little bit. This gives us a whole lot more information about Melchizedek than we really have in the Old Testament. It says this, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abram gave a tenth part of all, first being an interpretation, by interpretation, king of righteousness, which is what Melchizedek was, and after that also King of Salem, which is king of peace. Now listen how it describes Melchizedek. It says, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. So just as Melchizedek it says, was a priest continually and forever. What we see now is the same thing with Jesus. It says he's been made a high priest forever after this order of Melchizedek. In verse 4 it says, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. 
the lesser always is tied unto the greater, and especially since he was a priest of the Most High God. Abraham realized that and gave a tenth of all that he took from these battles with these kings, and he gave it to Melchizedek. Now verse 5, And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. So what he's saying here is, at Abel, after, through Abraham's line came Levi. The Levites were chosen to be the priests of God. They were chosen for that position. They were required to take tithes of the other children of Israel as well. But what they're saying is, Ab the, that Melchizedek was not a part of this lineage and yet he received tithes from Abraham. Obviously because the Levites weren't even around at this point in time. But this just shows you how different Melchizedek was from the priests that Israel came to know because they were chosen of a birthright, basically. God chose the, ch the tribe of Levi, and that's where the priests came out of was only that tribe. Now what was interesting was Jesus was made to be our high priest and that was totally out of the ordinary if you went by the normal way that the Jews did their priests because they all had to be from the tribe of Levi. Well, Jesus was not from that tribe. So it was interesting that he was made our high priest but he wasn't even of that tribe where God chose to bring the, the priest into his service. Which shows us really how important and how great Melchizedek was because it says Jesus was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Verse 7, And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And as I may say so, Levi also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abram, Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So what it's saying here is Melchizedek was of such a higher rank as far as being a priest, that the future Levites actually paid tithes to Melchizedek through the line of Abraham, who was their father. Verse 11, If therefore, therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, and not be called after the order of Aaron. You see, if, the, if all of the sacrifices and the acts of the priesthood that was through the Levitical line were good enough, there would never have had to be another high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So what he's pointing out here is the Levitical priesthood and all the sacrifices and all the law that came through that priesthood was inferior to what we have today in Jesus Christ. It's, they were under an old co the old covenant, we're under a new covenant, which the word tells us is a better covenant. And on top of that, we have a different high priest than they ever had. Ours is after the order of Melchizedek, and is not after the, the Levitical priesthood. So he's a higher level priest. Verse 12, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken 
pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So it's just showing again here that Jesus was not of that Levitical tribe. He was of Judah, not of Levi. He came out of the tribe of Judah. And he had to be specially appointed outside of the law to the priesthood that he now has. God himself put Jesus as that high priest. Now, if we look at verse 15, it says this, And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, talking about Jesus, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after, after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Now what's interesting here to see is this. With Jesus being our high priest forever, he is constantly, well first of all, he went, he, he, he was the sacrifice that brought peace between us and God. He took care of the sin problem once for all. Nobody today goes to hell because of sin. They go to hell because they refuse to accept the free gift of God and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. That refusal is what sends them to hell, not sin. Because Jesus took care of all of our sins. All we have to do is accept Him, accept what He's done for us, and we will have eternal life. But if anybody refuses to do that, that's what causes them to end up in hell. I want to go back to Hebrews chapter 5 and look at a couple of, a few verses here. Now look at this. This is even pointing more and more. Hebrews 5, verse 5. So also... Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. But he that said unto him, talking about God, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the same things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, as I mentioned earlier, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus was not appointed by man. It was not because of his lineage that he was a high priest. God, his father, called him out of a totally different tribe and made him a high priest after a different order, which is the order of Melchizedek. And because he is our high priest, it says he sits at the right hand of the father ever making intercession for us. It, I don't know about you, but it can bring a lot of peace to you. It does to me to know that we have a high priest who's gone through everything that we face. He did it without sin. He offered himself as a sacrifice to cover, basically to remit all of our sins and not just cover them, to get rid of them. And now he is our advocate that, see, that sits at the right hand of the Father, always helping us in our prayers, always helping us in our issues and needs. And that's in addition to the fact that we have the Holy Spirit living within us. I want to go now to Hebrews chapter 1 and look at a few verses here beginning with the first verse. This is more talking about how Jesus 
When you hear, when you see Jesus, when you see what the Bible has to said be, said of, say of him, what it shows us is that Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, it says, God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Obviously, he's talking about Jesus. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So we're seeing here that Jesus is superior to any of the angels because Jesus, first of all, was not created of God. He was God. God consisted and still consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it talks about here how we see, it says here, when we see Jesus, we see God, because in verse 3 it tells us that He is the express image of God. And it talks about how He purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the Father on high, causing the majesty on high. So you see, we have someone pretty special that's on our side pulling for us every day. Not only do we have the Holy Spirit living in us, but in addition to that, we have Jesus constantly making intercession for us, seated at the right hand of the Father. And then when you study the Word, it says that we are seated with Him in heavenly places. So you could say we're seated with Jesus at the right hand of the Father. We're there spiritually, and eventually we'll be there physically. I want you to turn now with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Just got a couple of more scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 21. This talks again about how Jesus became our high priest to some extent because it talks about what he did for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, For he hath made him, it's talking about Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I want to point out, it doesn't say that we were given righteousness or that we have righteousness. It says because of what he did, we are made righteousness. It's more than just something we have. It's something that we have become because of what Jesus has done for us. We don't just have righteousness. We are righteousness. It's important for us to understand that. Now go back to Proverbs 10. I want to just show you this. Proverbs 10. 
and we're going to look at verse 6, because this is a very interesting statement. It says, Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Because we are righteousness, blessings are upon our head. That's what Jesus provides for us. Every day of our lives, we're blessed. If we only knew everything that Jesus really provided for us, we'd be living a much better, more enjoyable, more pleasant life than we currently do. Our problem is, we don't know who we are in Christ, and I really think sometimes we really don't understand who Jesus Christ is. He's our high priest. He's the very Son of God. He's our high priest. He's provided our salvation. He's purged all of our sins, not covered them. He's purged them, taken them away. And now, because of our righteousness that we have through Him, it says we're blessed. And some of you, what you need to do, and I have to do this periodically, just sit down and think about all the blessings that God has given you. We are truly blessed. Stop some time and just take, make a list of all the blessings of God. You'll be surprised how many they are. I just want to encourage you. We have a high priest who's constantly making intercession for us, who paid for our salvation, and now wants to help us live a victorious life. Jesus Christ is our high priest, and it says he's our high priest forever. So if you've been made his righteousness through what he did, you're righteous forever, and we need to start living that way and understanding what he did for us. I pray that this has been a blessing to you, and I would say unto you, may the Lord be with you. Continue to be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. My prayer for you this week is that you have made Jesus Lord of your life. If not, I pray that you would have a personal visitation from him this week in which you do accept him as Lord of your life. Thank you, and we will see you next week. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Join us on Spectrum Cable Channel 9 on Tuesday at 7 p.m.